advantage to that. I'm gonna take off fourth gear here, no problem. I won't mention the speeds, but it was good speed. Okay guys, my favorite videos to make, ride along video. Today, we got the CUDA. So what we're gonna be doing is just jumping in, going for a nice drive. We'll see how long I wanna stay in the car, but we like to talk about the driving experience of the car. That's what Restamons are all about, is explaining to you all the upgrades, how they affect the car. Um, and the only way to do that is to get behind the wheel. So hop in with me and let's take this scooter for a ride. Okay guys, uh, I just got in, I'm excited. We're still in the shop right now. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I always forget to talk about is just getting into the car, like how the car presents itself to you initially. This one has no door handles. So the keyless entry is two buttons here, one for the driver's side, one for the passenger side, and one for the trunk. So it's all on like solenoids, which they just automatically pop open. You just open it and close it. No exterior handles. Uh, we've had some questions about, is there an emergency cable in case you get locked out? There is. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that but so you get in that way uh, you get into this pro car seat it's super comfortable and it's super adjustable so right off the bat like i'm a little far away from the pedals here so i'll just move it forward um, strap on the lap belt and then the key so this car has an aftermarket column i believe this is an i did it column uh, but it does have kind of an odd you know key to it and it's in a position that's a little out of the ordinary it's down under the column here um, I think this is just an older version of an I did it column. It came with the car when we bought it. So that's what it is, but it works fine. You see, you turn the key to the on position. You hear the fuel pump fire up. It's not a loud fuel pump. And then you see the Holly. We have the uh, little handheld for a Holly Terminator X Max is down here mounted on the console. That turns on. She starts right up. Um, this car does have a neutral safety switch. So something about this car is clutch in and the transmission has to be in neutral or it won't start which is kind of nice a lot of the older cars don't have that it's a good safety feature it was wired into the car so i'm happy with it it's check it out. okay so just jeff just said to get out there <laughs> just get out there and rip it so i'm not gonna let it warm up too much we're just gonna pull out so that i can keep talking um and it wouldn't be a ride-along video if we didn't have the crew standing there somewhat awkwardly may i add <laughs> helping me pull pull the car out of the garage Thank you. Thank you. So nice sunny day. I think it's about 75 degrees out here. We're doing it. We're just gonna pull out straight out of the garage. Nice and smooth clutch engagement on this. Um, the pedal feel is really light. So it's very easy to push this clutch in. Some of these cars with the higher power levels, they'll have a dual disc clutch and it takes a little more effort. We went ahead and went through a lot of the uh, the hydraulic clutch pedal system on this car. It wasn't really working the best when we got it. So we put a Silver Sport hydraulic um, pedal assembly in there and it made a huge difference. This car is really smooth as far as the clutch pedal. And you can see I'm driving real slow because the car's not warmed up yet. I literally just started it. Um, so we're going to put it around for a little bit. I'll get my glasses on because it's nice and sunny out today really good oil pressure um, all the gauges work so right now we have 75 psi of oil pressure charging at 14.7 volts we got about half a tank of gas um, tack is working nice and smoothly uh, we hooked up this gen 3 hemi to the holly x max the terminator x max system is really good so it controls the tack now uh, we have it controlling the fans now all kinds of stuff that when we first got this car, the original Mopar computer just wouldn't handle. Um, so that's a huge upgrade for this car. It made a big difference in drivability. Uh, we had a, a tuner come in and make sure everything looked good on it. Added a little bit of timing because these things are real conservative. Not a lot, but just a little bit to give it a little extra spice. So this thing, over 400 horsepower. I want to say it's a 425 horsepower crate engine. Um, and it, uh, it got a little bit of an upgrade, so it's peppy. I love the sound of this thing too. And the steering is nice. This has a rack and pinion. We put a new power steering pump on it, new alternator on it. The whole front accessory drive has been kind of gone through and revised. Uh, and the steering feel is great. It's not over-assisted. It's got the rack and pinion. 
which just makes it feel a lot sportier than one of these cars would be stock. It's tighter, not a ton of play. I just I love that about it. It makes a huge difference when you're driving this car. It's it's the things that I want to talk about in the video is the driver feel. So that is steering, you know, suspension, uh, braking, and this car is a manual transmission, so the shifting and the and the clutch pedal feel, all that good stuff. So shifting is handled by an offset shifter to put it in the straight in the same position uh, in this beautiful stock console. So it does have an extra mechanism. So it's not as notchy feeling. It has a more OEM feel to it because of the uh, shifter relocation, but it's in the right spot and it's got the pistol grip, which is really cool. I love the pistol grip. I just jump in these cars on these days and I really don't even know where I'm going. Um, so you guys are along for the ride. We'll figure it out as we go. Plenty of places in San Diego to cruise a car like this. I've personally driven this car a couple hundred miles already. So when we got the car, it only had a few hundred miles on it and there was a lot of shakedown stuff we had to do to it for drivability, uh, suspension tuning, steering stuff. We changed a lot on the car uh, and then we've just been putting test miles on all those changes. So everything's pretty dialed and pretty comfortable. We've driven it in some extreme heat. Today is not that, today is just nice cruising weather. I might roll up the windows, so we got power windows on this thing. They work nicely. The only complaint I might have about these power windows is that the switches are all in the individual window positions. So when you're driving the car, you don't really have, unless you have really long arms, I couldn't reach that driver side power window right now. So. Minor complaint I have there. I know modern cars are designed with like an extra switch somewhere close to you so that you can roll all, all the windows up and down. This being a hardtop car and having no pillar, I really like to drive with all the windows down. Um, so it's kind of not, not a huge disadvantage, you know, it's just if you're on the freeway, you might have to unbuckle and reach over. So minor thing. Uh, the driving position in this car, it's great. So. These cars, you tend to sit really low in them. I've been in some of them that are factory and the dash sits up way high. In this car, the seating position kind of boosts you up a little higher, but because the sliders are at an angle, the taller you are and the further back you move the seat, the more downward position you go as well. So that's that's kind of nice because it, it kind of keeps you in that optimal, that optimal height too for headroom and all that stuff. Interior is beautiful in this car. Uh, this car just cruises. It has a GPS speedometer that's pretty accurate. Um, I pinned it against my phone app. Right now we're just cruising at 70 and 50 or no problem. Uh, the modern Hemi's at 2100 RPM, so it's not even taxed right now. Uh, and we're just on the freeway here. It's a nice day. I'm glad there's not a lot of traffic. Sometimes I get in doing these driving videos and there's just a day where there's a ton of traffic. Today seems to be like the perfect day for it, so. Some things to talk about too are the differences in this car versus other classic cars. So the last car we did was the Camaro. Uh, that was a more extreme car as far as the drivetrain. So it had a lot more power and the suspension was a little bit more hardcore. So that car felt a little sportier. This car feels a little more comfortable. Like it feels like you could take this car out. So what this car does have for suspension is a um, altercation type front tubular front end so that gets rid of the k member and the torsion bars it's got a tubular front end with uh coilovers on the front wheel with disc brakes the rack and pinion and that makes it handle really nice it's basically like a modern car um, better alignment better geometry characteristics in the car uh, you can just cruise this car on the freeway i'm like one handing it with no problem I love that when I get into these resto mods. You know, I've driven a lot of these cars original and you're kind of white knuckling it sometimes. Like they don't keep up with modern traffic. If you do any modifications to a car and you can feel comfortable in modern, modern traffic, you did a good job. So that's really great. This car has a four link in the back too. So it has a triangulated four link with coilovers in the back. That really helps this car feel planted. We got some really good tires on it. Um, so this car, you know, the, it's got a lot of grip. 
Uh, it's got a staggered wheel fitment that plants the car. Like I said, the better alignment, the rack and pinion. This car, you know, it feels like I'm driving my daily driver in this car, uh, but it does have a lot more performance having a 6.1 liter Gen 3 Hemi. Uh, and that, that engine too, it has some advantages too. Like this, I've never really seen this thing get warm. Even on the hottest day we drove it in with the AC on in traffic, I think the hottest I ever saw this car get was 210 degrees maybe. Um, so that's also a plus. I'm gonna merge over. I feel comfortable in the visibility in this car merging, uh, even though like we're in traffic, getting into like a situation where everyone's kind of crossing over and stuff. The power disc brakes feel great. Uh, you just have to breathe on them. You're not like stopping or planning too far ahead. So it's very intuitive the way you drive this car. Uh, it's not gonna take a ton of getting used to, which is nice. Uh, a lot of these old cars, even when they're modified, it takes some getting used to. This car is very intuitive um, and you get in and you just go. Not a lot of creaks and rattles in this car either. That's something that is an improvement over stock. The interior has been dynamated. Um, sound insulation, everything being new in it, it's all put together really nice. Um, the dashboard too, although it's not real carbon fiber, it's got that look, it matches the shifter, and it's a real nice place to put a full set of aftermarket autometer gauges uh, that are like their carbon fiber ultralight series gauge. Really cool to look at. Um, we put this steering wheel on, it had a different steering wheel, but this is like a uh, almost a three spoke with split spokes. It's all black, so it really blends in with the interior and it's a leather half wrap. So it's got kind of the finger grooves on the back, which are nice. Uh, when you do want to grip onto the wheel, you have like full control of it. You're not sliding around. Those finger grips kind of help. It's more performance feel. It's a smaller wheel too. I think this is a 14 inch wheel. Yeah, we're heading west today. I usually go out east there's like a little bit more open road situation out there but with this car i kind of want to cruise the coast it's such a nice day um, and i feel so much more comfortable in traffic in this car because of the light clutch pedal uh, the gen 3 hemi not running hot you know it has a dual electric fan setup that's also controlled by the holly so although you have all this information on the dash the little holly touchscreen is also displaying all kinds of good stuff um, and you have some tunability in there too. We normally put a Phytech on everything. You guys have seen us talk about that a lot. Phytech doesn't make anything for a Gen 3 Hemi. Um, and the Terminator X-Max is a really, really good system as well. Um, and they're a little more widespread. So even finding somebody you know, in your area to whoever wins this car, we don't know where they're gonna be, but uh, there's more people familiar with the Holly system that are willing to jump in and tune a Holly Terminator. So you won't really have any issues with that down the line, which is kind of nice too. So this is a nice right hand sweeper, uh, off camber a little bit, and the car feels really planted, really responsive. Not a ton of steering input feel, not a lot of bump steer either. That's a good thing on these cars. Um, when you're going through a sweeper or something, you hit little bumps in the freeway. You know, this is not a racetrack, this is just a normal street or normal freeway here in California. So they're not gonna be perfectly smooth surfaces. And when you hit them, this car isn't wanting to switch lanes or anything like that. It's completely predictable and stable, which is nice. Decent visibility too. Like I said, um, we added these killer Ring Brother mirrors and they're in the right spot, the rear view mirror. And these cars do have a big C pillar. Uh, so when you are shoulder checking, there is kind of a blind spot in this car. Uh, you can't get away from that with having a, a, a car that looks killer design wise exterior. You're not gonna be sitting in a fishbowl. You're gonna be sitting in a car that has like shorter window heights, um, bigger C pillars. That's what makes this car so cool though is that it has those design features. So when you're driving it, it's just like anything. You get used to it. Once this is your car, uh, even the modern cars, a lot of the modern Camaros, modern Challengers, they have that same thing. So it's just, uh, you want a cool looking car, you're probably gonna have a big C pillar. Uh, 
as long as you're okay with that. It's not a big deal. This car is just cruising, I love it. The power disc brakes, like I said, so it's Will Woods on all four corners uh, with a uh, aftermarket dual reservoir master cylinder and a uh, booster. It's an eight inch dual diaphragm booster. So once we corrected all the pedal geometry for it, it feels really good. I mean, it feels like almost as close to a modern car as I've been in as far as these rest of months. I kind of prefer a manual brake pedal because it's very linear, but for power brakes, this car is really doing it for me. So I'm gonna take a little sweeper here, get back into the gas a little bit. It's tightening. Keep digging in, keep digging in. You turn the car in as hard as you want, it just takes it. And it sounds great. Gen 3 Hemi through Flowmasters, I mean, it sounds killer. Got all the V8 noises, I love it. And we're right up to speed. Um, just like that, freeway speeds. I think I was pretty much up to freeway speed in third gear. The upshifting was just, just not to go too crazy with the car. Very smooth linear power delivery on this car. Um, it's not overwhelmingly fast, but I may be kind of jaded. I mean, the last couple cars we've given away have been like pretty high horsepower. They've been boosted cars. Uh, the Silver Chevelle, extremely rowdy. Uh, you're not just flooring it in that car. It's like on the border of having fun and being scared. Uh, the supercharged Camaro was kind of in that sweet spot with six, 650 horsepower. Uh, that was great. Uh, that was really fun car. Extremely fast. The power to weight ratio on that car was like in supercar territory. This car probably weighs 3,000 pounds, maybe a little more. Um, so it's not a heavy car and it's not a huge car. But at this power level, it's a very sweet spot where like you can, you can really play with the gas pedal, probably not get into too much trouble because the car is built probably to handle a little more power. So if you ever did want to get crazy and snap a, slap a supercharger on this thing, the chassis would feel okay for it. Uh, the transmission would hold. So I like it though, naturally aspirated, the simplicity of it, the tunability of it. Uh, and it's no slouch. I mean, it's got the power. It's it's still over 400 horsepower in a 3,000 pound car. Our, you know, kind of our, the internet has made a thousand horsepower seem like it's nothing, but it's really a lot. Um, it's, it's too much for the street. You can't do anything with it as far as uh, putting the power down unless you have a car that's like basically built around that power level, whether you want to do specific roll racing or you want to do drag racing. Those cars get really one dimensional. Um, when you're talking a street car that's drivable, long distances, comfortable, I'm totally happy with this 425 horsepower level. Uh, you gotta think when this engine came out, you know, it was in probably a Challenger or a, uh, I think an SR, a 300, like an SRT one had this. Um, but these were big, heavy cars and this was considered a good amount of power. We're about to drive onto an island. I've never done one of these ride-alongs here, but it's pretty scenic, so hopefully this looks good on camera for you guys. But this is just gonna be a cruise. Um, this is a nice little loop Fiesta Island here in San Diego. Such a cool little spot that we have to explore. It's a one-way. Uh, it's the middle of the week, so it's not super busy here. If you come here on a weekend, it's jam-packed with people. Uh, but it's super cool. You can actually drive out into the sand. I'm probably not gonna do that in this car. Uh, there's no need but you can drive up to the water. This is kind of what this car is for. Uh, you go out, explore your city, hit some scenic spots, just enjoy the ride. I'm just gonna roll the window down, enjoy the fresh air. When I talk about it in the intro and outro about how this is, this is like my favorite thing, <laughs> my favorite days at work, uh, this is why. I mean, this is, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the coolest car. I mean, a Cuda to me, as far as the Mopars go, 70 Cuda is the best looking Cuda out there. 
Uh, it's right up there with the uh, 68 Charger for me. I think those two cars are probably the most well-known, most iconic. Uh, even against the Camaro, I love a 69 Camaro. Um, you know, and I'm kind of a Chevy guy at heart, but the look of a 70 Cuda is just so killer. These, these designs at this time, we're, they were just peak. You know, we, we peaked as a country as far as muscle car design during this time. Uh, I think the gas crisis happened after this and things got a little pudgier, designs got a little different. Uh, but this is just, there's a reason we love how these cars look. They stir up a lot of emotions. I mean, cars are emotional objects. I know it's an inanimate object. And a lot of times when I do these ride-alongs, the tendency is to compare one of these to a, a modern car. And there is some modern cars that you might get more optimal technology in all the fields as far as suspension, handling, brakes, all that good stuff. There is like probably, Probably a normal car these days might beat one of these even upgraded, except for the soul. You know, th this car has a soul and a character like no other, even with all the modern upgraded stuff. I mean, the layout of this dash is just so good. You don't get this in a modern car. I mean, the way you feel when you're driving it, that's what it's all about in a car like this. And the way the car feels is so much better than stock. I uh, had the pleasure of driving one of these um, at a place that I worked before that. It was a 70 Cuda, and I believe it had like 30,000 original miles. Everything was original on it. It was a 383 car. I really did not like how that car drove. I'm sorry, Mopar guys. I'm sorry, purist, original. Uh, during that time, this was probably 15 years ago when I drove that car. During that time, uh, Mopar resto mods were not where they're at now. I think uh, during that time, the majority of what you saw in the Mopar community was leaning towards original restored cars. They had a certain feel to them. For me, it wasn't a good feel. Uh, I drove that car compared to other original type cars. It wasn't my favorite. Uh, so, like I said, sorry Mopar guys. Just wasn't my favorite. I'll take this any day. Uh, the improvements with the suspension, the braking, uh, a modern Hemi, the five speed, just changes this car. It's night and day compared to that other car I drove. I walked away after driving that car. It's like, it was almost like never meet your heroes type thing where I loved how those cars looked and I thought I was gonna have a blast driving it. And I got back a little disappointed in the driving experience. And uh, that's why the resto mods are so popular. They, they deal with all that. It, it is like where you wanna meet your hero. And then you wanna go drive this car. This car looks so cool and it's a car. It's meant to be driven, right? So if we can do things or have cars that improve upon that, that's really killer. That's what it's all about. And that's what you get with this car. That's When we saw this car, we saw it had a lot of good improvements. It was a pretty freshly built car. We can't take the credit for most of the build on this car. This car was 99% there when we bought it. Uh, we changed things. We sorted out things. We did change the fuel system on it, uh, change the front accessory drive, dialing in, all that last 10% when you have a completely hand-built custom car takes a while. And that's what we spent our time doing on this car, making sure that when we do take a car like this out and go on a ride-along video like, you, like you're in right now with me, it's just gonna be an enjoyable experience. I'm not gonna be sitting here talking about all the weird finicky things uh, a lot of times you get into a car that's really heavily customized and they have little nuances to them, you know, they lose a little bit of the drivability due to custom one-off things. Uh, this car has a lot of stuff that is like uh, engineered from a company that has spent a lot of time like just on the suspension, just on the brakes, uh, vintage air. So stuff that is just dialed, you know, we know these are proven parts companies. And so when you put it all together on a car like this, it's a good formula. Uh, you gotta do little things to get it all to work together. And that's what we spent a little bit of time doing to make the whole package cohesive so that I can just leave the shop, have no intended route, no plan, just decide with you guys in the car, hey, I wanna go cruise around this island in San Diego Bay, you know, and just putz this thing around. Maybe if it's just 20 miles per hour in first and second gear, this thing has no issue doing it. We just did like a third gear rip to get on the freeway. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on this car that's brand new. Uh, the clutch 
Probably has 800 miles on it. We just went through the rear end on this car. We had Pro Gear completely rebuild the, uh, the rear end on this car. So I'm not doing any burnouts or hard launches because this rear end is still in break-in mode. Uh, but that's good peace of mind. You guys know you have a brand new rear end, a brand new crate engine from Mopar. This is not some junkyard engine uh, that we pulled out. This is a brand new from Mopar. And then the same thing, like the computer is all new from Holly. The alternator is brand new. All the parts on this car are new. A lot of them have a warranty. The transmission is not a junkyard transmission. This thing's brand new from Tremec. Uh, it's built to handle this power level, no issue. So that's kind of a plus. Uh, there is a double-edged sword with brand new parts. So when we bought this car, kind of the double-edged sword is that when you're driving cars that are put together and have no miles on them, it's inevitable that you're gonna sort out little things. Uh, like I said, like the rear end. The rear end had been rebuilt before, but it wasn't uh, an exact rebuild. So it started making a little noise. I went ahead and decided, you know what, let's pull it out. Let's have it gone through again by a trusted source. Pro Gear here does all of our rear ends. They did that. Those are just the kind of things that pop up that makes it, like I said, a double-edged sword uh, when you are dealing with a car with all new parts. So what we do is take that double-edged sword and dole one side for you basically by putting some miles on it, driving it, breaking it in. Like I said, right now, this car is 800 miles on a lot of these parts. And so you can be rest assured that, uh, that everything's gonna be good for you. This thing has LED turn signals, which is kind of nice because when you do want to let somebody know, hey, I'm trying to get over, uh, the LEDs are much brighter during the day. It's a bright, sunny day. It's got the LED tail lights on it, LED headlights. So all the lighting is upgraded as well. At night, you can really tell with this car. Uh, you know, it's just, they're just modern day standards that have been raised. And luckily the aftermarket has a lot of cool stuff. It's been a while for the Mopar community and the aftermarket to catch up. Like I said, a lot of the tendency for these Mopars was restored original. Uh, people thought it was like sacrilege to start cutting up and modifying these cars. Luckily, this car started out with just a 318. It was kind of a pedestrian car. If there is such a thing as a pedestrian 70 Cuda, this was it. But now it has a Hemi, uh, and now you, we can call this a Hemi Cuda. If you were looking at original type stuff, a Hemi Cuda was unobtainium. That was like a six, seven figure car most of the times because they were pretty rare. Uh, and I can tell you, it probably didn't drive like this. This is probably faster than an original Hemi Cuda car. Uh, and at a fraction of the cost, but all the usability. And a lot of drivability. I, I like this car. Like I said, the power number is more mild than what we've been giving away, but it's, not a slouch, like this is not a 300 horsepower car. This is definitely a over 400 horsepower car. And it's smooth, it's so smooth in everything it does that it gives you a lot of confidence to have fun, go out and rip it, change lanes. You know, fifth gear, we're just cruising. We're on the freeway with modern traffic. I love it. Decently quiet in here too. Windows down, you know, Flowmaster exhaust. We're going 75 miles an hour right now. I have to raise my voice a little because we're not in, um, you know, Rolls Royce with all the windows up. But that's part of what I like about this too is that it's not too loud, but it gives you the feel. You know, it's a muscle car. You can hear the rumble, the V8. It's not droning, but you hear it. When you step on the gas, you get the rumble you want. Uh, so there's just something that adds to the soul of the cars that you don't get in a new car. So walking that fine line with a Resto mod of how much you're gonna upgrade where you lose the soul of the car, that's something that as we've been around these cars a lot more and giving away more cars, we're really getting that formula dialed in where it's enjoyable to drive, but exciting too. You know, like a big part of these cars, it's a bright red 70 Cuda. It's exciting, like walking up to this car, getting into it, all of that's exciting. So we want the driving experience to be equally as exciting, but not scare you exciting, not white knuckle exciting, not the whole type of like, I don't know what this car is going to do. It's unpredictable. You know, that's, that's a different level of car. Sometimes that's because of the high horsepower number, sometimes because it's just not a sorted out combination. 
we're getting away from that. We're getting like proven, proven brands, proven parts, coilovers, wheel with disc brakes, fuel injection. Um, there's just a lot of stuff out there that we're not experimenting too much anymore, which is nice because then you get to a level where we have these formulas that we know work. And then from there, we get to make design choices, little style choices, uh, upgrading things on cars that we buy. Like this car does not have the same wheels and tires that we got with it. We upgraded to US mags um, and we went with a 17, 18 inch staggered width combo, staggered sizes. To me, the more I looked at these cars, uh, the more that was appealing to me as far as the rear quarter panels on these cars are so much bulkier and heavier visually than the front fenders that if we would have done a 17 inch all the way around, the rear wheels would have looked small. So we went to the 18 inch and it just looks natural, but it doesn't look like a big wheel uh, because we do still have some rubber, some sidewall. That was all intentional. Those were all things that uh, wheels and tires are such a personalized choice that we try to go with stuff that is not going to be offensive, but still look good and classy, have an overall appeal. Uh, we always get tons of comments about wheels and tires because they're just such a personalized thing. Uh, those are the choices we went with on this car. We went away from something that was way more personalized. This car had 20 inch wheels on it. There's very few cases where I like 20 inch wheels on a muscle car. Uh, same thing with the steering wheel. It had this kind of bulky grip feel steering wheel. This thing's much cleaner, nicer, simple, ties in with the interior. So there's little stuff like that that we get to do. I'm just enjoying the ride here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about driving experience. I haven't had to think too much about stuff. The pedal layout is good on this car. I'm 5'9", so I'm like right in the mid range of people as far as shorter people, taller people, who's going to be driving this car. Uh, and it's a good setup for me. I like the shifter layout, the position. Everything feels good. I don't like being really far from the wheel where I'm like reaching for it. And I don't like being up close to it. This kind of bent arm situation feels good to me. Uh, pedal layout's good. You know, I'm not resting my foot on the clutch. There's plenty of room to put my left foot down here and not be on top of the dimmer switch or anything like that. Uh, the vintage air controls are within reach. The only other thing that's not within reach, I mentioned the uh, window switches for the passenger side are out of reach. The other thing that's kind of out of reach is the stereo. This car actually has a really ripping stereo. Uh, it's a Kenwood, I believe, but it's in the glove box. Uh, it's hidden, which the advantage to that, I'm gonna take off fourth gear here, no problem. I won't mention the speeds, but it was good speed. Uh, the only problem with the stereo tube being in there is that you need the remote to control it. It's Bluetooth enabled, so a lot of times these days, you're just connecting your phone. Uh, it's not like the old days where you're constantly playing with the tuner and the volume. You can do that with your phone now, which is kind of nice. So those are my two, I don't know if you want to call them complaints, but they're things that are sacrificed because of modern upgrades. You know, this car didn't have power windows, so it's no different than if you had to reach over and crank the window, except you only press one button. The stereo being hidden too, I, I kind of like what it did for the layout. You know, there's not a natural place to put a modern stereo here on the dash layout. You know, the vintage air controls. So hiding it in the glove box, I think it's a good solution. A little bit of compromise, but I like what it did for the overall layout of the interior and the look. When you look inside this car, the interior is just as nice as the exterior. Uh, and that's what I like about a custom car. If you take this car to a show or you take it to an event or anywhere, you basically, you get out, you walk away. People see the outside, they walk up, they want to look at it. And then maybe they're drawn into what's under the hood. This thing shines there, it's all polished. Uh, a lot of work went into the engine, polishing anything that was cast aluminum is polished. So that would draw you in in a show setting. And then the cherry on top is the interior. You look into a car like this and the interior is clean, simple, well put together. Everything looks like it should in a Cuda. Nothing that stands out as being abnormal. 
so that's a plus too. It's just a cohesive car. It's a it's one big good package. Uh, and I see that a lot. Sometimes you see a car looks nice on the outside, questionable choices on the inside. Uh, sometimes you see a car that looks great, under the hood is not dialed in. Uh, this car, underneath the car, is dialed in. Uh, there is uh, a lot of attention to detail. The whole underside of the car was painted. It went on a full rotisserie restoration. Everything's brand new. It's painted, it's detailed out to the max. There's no weird, rusty, old stuff hanging out under this car. Super well finished. The amount, I can't even imagine the amount of man hours that went into this car before we bought it. It's a lot. If you had to pay to have this car built, you would be, depending on a labor rate, you could easily have 300 grand getting the car to this level. So buying it where it was with at that 99% mark for us was perfect. Uh, and then we got to put a few finishing touches and just make sure everything was nice and finished drivability wise. It all makes for a great package where you can get in and do what we're doing today. Just go drive it. It just stands out in modern traffic. Um, that's another benefit of this car. It looks really cool, but in modern traffic, it just stands out so much. It's so different than anything that's on the road. It's because of the shape of it. Uh, you cannot beat the proportions of this car. We've had cars with six speeds, this one's a five speed, and I've, ne I've never really cruised this car above 2,500 RPM on the freeway, so the five speed is great. Immediate drop to fourth gear, no problem. Third gear, while turning, you know, you can turn this car, you're not white knuckling, take your hand off the wheel, shift it. Everything's fine. Plenty of power. A lot of power, really. I mean, that was just... Getting up to speed is no problem in this car. It puts a smile on my face every time. Okay, back in the shop now. After cruising this thing around for a while, freeway speeds, I went to Fiesta Island, cruised it around by the bay. Uh, what a pleasure. Uh, this car looks really killer. The performance is great. Rowing gears, windows down on the freeway, putting around, no worries with this car. Just a good combination. Fuel injected, Gen 3 Hemi, five speed disc brakes, coilovers. It's got all the cool stuff. The interior is super comfortable. Uh, it's all trimmed in leather and suede. Just all the modern amenities. I could go on and on. These taillights, forgot to mention. One of my favorite parts of 70 Cuda, the taillights. But thank you guys for sticking through it with me, driving around while I ramble on about all the things I like about a car this cool. But if you want to be the one rambling on to your friends or your family or whoever, you got to get entered to win and you could be behind the driver's If you want to be the one uh, that gets to talk about the driving experience on this car, it's as easy as signing up. So just get entered to win at Restomons.com. And as always, keep having phone calls.